Hello, and uh, welcome back to another video. So sorry that the cat's bothering the camera. I'm using my camera instead of my phone because I wanted to address uh, some of the comments in yesterday's video. Which, by the way, I was terrified to wake up to see how many views it had. So, as of this moment, I have 1,391 views. Wah. <laughs> I don't, I don't think I was meant to be this famous, so uh, I'm sure that'll die down and that'll be awesome. Um, there are lots of comments to go over, and I thought I would just do a few of them. Mainly because some I want to address without making a video dedicated to each one and some because of the ludicrous claims against us, starting with this one from Black Wonder Boy. Please, you guys are just talking shit. They started it off great, amazing visuals, and the plot is going to be epic. You guys are just mad because a black chick is rocking the main character. Glad nothing from the 60s, 80s, or 90s campish trick was used. No one can anticipate the future while looking over one's shoulder. And I don't know where in the video we might have given the impression that we were not chill with the captain being Asian and the first officer being black. That's never been a problem. In every Star Trek, there has been an alien or a person of color on the bridge, and I am more for it. My only problem with the bridge crew has been, in my opinion, the lack of character development. We don't... I know they've said their names, but not enough that I retain them. <laughs> Obviously, my husband could remember the uh, science officer's name, but I couldn't. But no, it was never about race. It was about them writing better characters. So, I don't know. Um, I didn't understand this one, and I will have to do research and come back to you, but someone made the comment that holograms did exist in the 23rd century that it was established in the Voyager episode Flashback. And I don't recall this because in Deep Space Nine, them having the holographic communication was kind of the new shiny thing. So I'm not gonna say that we, they don't have it, but I don't remember it being there. And Voyager did a lot to mess up the timeline, so I wouldn't take their escapades completely seriously. Um, oh, and that was by Mark Henson. This one is Luminous Orange Sunglasses. You decided to hate it before you watched it. It skews your review. Those of us without an overinflated sense of sentimentality thought the show was great. Now, I'll break that in half. The top half Yes, I probably went in with a stronger bias to dislike it than like it, but I at least did give it the chance. For the second half, my overinflated sense of sentimentality. That's kind of why they made the series. They wanted the people riding that 50th anniversary wave to crash into this new thing. It's kind of like when they did the J.J. Abrams verse where they used Kirk and Spock and Ahura and Sulu and Chekhov because those are names that are recognized. They could have made something else. Just like this, I don't know why they're trying to establish it into the universe when it should be its own standalone. I, I won't get into that. Whatever. Um... This one, I screenshotted it wrong, so I don't know if your whole name is just Mr. Movie, but Mr. Movie, it could be just that particular Klingon's house ritual to, de to respect the dead, and cloaking technology can be easily explained. The Federation didn't encounter it until some time after Discovery takes place, and before that matter, no human had ever seen a Romulan until Kirk. So, there are a couple things in that. We had a Romulan war, just because we had never really seen them, though if you watch Enterprise, we did see them. But, excusing that, if you go into the novels, there there was a war between uh, 
the Federation and the Romulans, which is why in TOS we have that kind of Cold War, stay off of our ground stuff. We knew about their cloaking technology. We just didn't know how to counteract it. It's not that it didn't exist. But, uh, I don't know. It really does feel like they're rewriting everything, so the establishment of, hey, there was a Romulan war, we should know what the cloaking technology is, it doesn't appear to matter anymore. So, I don't really have an answer for that one. Um, this one, let's see. Do, do, do. For some reason, uh, being told to cool it because this is a prequel to TOS by Susan Graham is supposed to make it all better. Prequels generally are supposed to establish the grounds upon which the original st stood on. Kind of like, so I know Enterprise isn't everyone's favorite, but at least they kind of go over the nitpicky stupid stuff. They establish how Red Alert came to be. They cover when photon torpedoes were new and shiny. They cover diplomatic relations to new you know, new species. There is so much that can be done within the universe and still be a prequel without going off the rails. I don't know. Um, Joe Cronin Show. Wow, love you guys. Feel bad for the guy, though. He is a trained cuck. Really, dude? Really? For one, if you hadn't noticed, this is my channel. Mine. He has his own channel. He is a guest on my channel. For now. And when the camera is off, he doesn't shut up. <laughs> he is camera shy for some reason. If he keeps doing this with me, I'm sure he'll break it. Also, watch a couple of the other episodes, especially about animes like Gundam. Yeah, he does not shut up. <laughs> there, there are no cucks in this house, I'm sorry to say. But, also Paul Munro, we can see who's in charge in this relationship. I, most relationships are equal partnerships, so no one's in charge? I don't know. I don't, I don't know what you expect, but, uh, Summer Camp responded with, hey, Worf is handsome, and yes, I, I did say Klingons were ugly, and I rescind that, because Worf is damn handsome. <laughs> it is, yeah, there's another comment, I'll get to that. Uh, love it, can't wait for more, that's fine. Nope, fuck this bullshit show and the Klingon aren't making the cut for me. I kind of agree. The captain is better than the first officer. Agreed. Uh, so this one, again, I didn't screenshot it well. It just says, and me, so that might be your name. Uh, I love it when the guy in the background says, real people don't respond that fast. Well, we can tell that you don't respond fast as your lady friend. I'm his wife, by the way looked back twice at you and you just look stunned so yeah hilarious and i press stop so in a normal conversation when you're talking to someone i i got what my husband was saying you have to listen and process what they said maybe not that long a pause people with adhd and whatnot need longer to process what you say but even for the most perfect brain you need to hear process, respond. Generally, that's like two seconds. In the show, it felt very over-rehearsed, is what I was thinking, where it was speak, response, speak, response, which maybe after seven years of working together, they have that ability to flow. But for the outside observer, it feels a little weird that one wouldn't have to stop and think about what the other said. Like... Captain, we're going in circles. No, we're not going in circles. And she's just like, da what? Instead of thinking. I don't know. Like, the conversation between the first officer and Sarek is much more fluid compared to the first officer and the captain. I, I don't know what... I don't know. It's not... It was a little too robotic, is all we were saying. 
It didn't have the conversation vibe. Um, sorry guys, your review is so boring and negative. Sorry, Robert Wastheim, you didn't have to watch. Uh, I am not a shiny, fancy person, so. David Kiernan, shut up whining arseholes. I didn't think we were whining. I thought we were giving a very level-headed response to the show, but I am sorry if we offended your sensibilities. Um, Glenn Few, you already said you didn't expect to like it. You wanted to, but you couldn't let go of your preconceived notions of past Star Trek series. The next generation got the same kind of reviews. People hated it at first. You have to give it a chance. And I said I would. I said if enough people told me why they liked it, I would continue watching it. So far, all I've gotten is a whole bunch of you sucks and bitch and what up whatnot, so, um, eh, and then this one, Samson Ironman, actually the captain and her first officer weren't wandering aimlessly, I assume you meant wandering, they were helping a species be by opening up wells, stopped your video after that comment, and oh yeah, it's not real, it's just a show. If it's just real and or not real and just a show, which, duh, why are you mad at me? Also, that's my problem, is they opened with just wandering around in the desert to open this well, seemingly for this species, which is bending the first, you know, prime directive. However, they don't explain why they're doing it, and in they're doing so, they even mention that they can't interact with the locals because that would be breaking the prime directive or General Order 1. So my point is, you can't say it both ways. You need to explain what you're doing or don't try so hard. You know, like, in Star Trek uh, Into Darkness, they went and they stole things from the native inhabitants to stop their volcano blowing up clearly breaking the Prime Directive, they got in trouble for it. But they tried their best to explain what they were doing while they were doing it. Now, I didn't need over-the-top heroics like the movie, but an explanation for why they were doing it would have been appreciated. So, that's my opinion. Uh, Max Witt says, they're an ancient, well, Wrong there, by the way. They're an ancient hybrid Klingon, and yes, I've seen all the Star Trek, and this show fits into the 2200 timeline, and your opinions are totally biased. I just have to wonder what hybrid? The only variants in Klingons we have seen have been the Ridgeless, which is because of the Augment Serum, or Ridged, which the ridges match houses. So I am very curious as to where these Klingons are from. Do the other 24 houses they're talking about match these ones, or are they the oddballs? I would like to know that. And I... If they are a hybrid, a hybrid of what? Explain it to me. That's the problem. This show didn't explain anything in the first episode. And I know they didn't really explain Worf in the first episode, but eventually they made an effort to explain him and what happened. That there was a disease, I think is what they called it, and... Eh, I don't know. I am biased. I'm not... I said I was. I love all of Star Trek except this. I even love Enterprise. But I don't love this. But I would continue watching it because I'm willing to give it a try. Um, let's see. Uh, someone talking about if they went to the Academy, but someone responded, go President Trump, you snowflakes. So why would that rabbit of a Trump supporter be watching this? Because it has people of color in charge and aliens. I don't know. 
Uh, this person's screaming, it's 10 years before Kirk, with a response from someone of, actually, it's nine years. Um, does that matter? Like, the technology is still wrong. And I know, I think somewhere someone complained, or wrote to me, saying that we shouldn't be hung up on the technology, that because our technology is advanced, theirs should. And if it were a future biographical thing, like basing it off of us right now, then yeah, it should upgrade. But this is a completely different world, right? We've already established that that future is not going to be our future. That future is a better future where we unite as a people. And I don't know, in Enterprise, they had pretty advanced technology. And in the Romulan War novel that follow it, they explain they had to dumb down the technology, which is why in TOS it's all bleeps and whistles, because the Romulans were hacking us. But this is still too advanced. Leading one to believe that either we haven't established that Romulans exist, or this doesn't take place in the same timeline. I don't know. That's why it bothers me. Um, this person, Willie Allen, who also said it was, you know, 10 years before Kirk, none of the Klingons look the same. Every series is different. No. <laughs> I wanted to respond immediately to you, but I didn't. In the original series, they're ridgeless. They have weird mustaches. Yes, they're, they're not the Klingons of modern Trek. They are an, what they could do at the time. So when you get to the next generation, we have these crusted warrior races. But TNG, DS9, Voyager, and Enterprise all use the same character style for the Klingons. The culture changes a bit between each one as they establish their little society. But for the most part, they keep those high ridges, they keep a crest of skin with mane of hair. That is, in general, what they look like for four of the series. So to sit and say that every time they're different, no, their clothes change, their culture changes, their aesthetics don't change. But yes, from TOS to TNG, they do. But they do explain that in Enterprise. Um, this one, whom my husband got into a shouting match with, uh, Julian Stiles was saying that it's people like us that have held Star Trek back because we love it. Um, and then they sat and said that they were happy that this one wasn't going to be episodic. It was going to be more Star Trek with an arc. And I agree with someone who responded, have you watched Star Trek? Most Star Trek is episodic. The arcs are generally in the middle of a season or end of a season. The closest we have to an arc would be DS9, with Cisco being the prophet of the emissaries. And even then, many of the episodes are still episodic, where we go on wild goose chases on things. And it's only towards the end of seasons where it's like, oh yeah, the emissary of the prophets. So, when Enterprise tried to do an arc with the Zindi War, people didn't like it. It failed what we expected from Star Trek, which was supposed to be a weekly reminder that humanity could be better and we will do better and not all is doom and gloom and we're putting someone in an airlock. <laughs> so there you go. That is our take on it. Is that all I screenshotted? I think so, but more keep coming in anyways. <laughs> uh... Oh, that one. Yeah. A lot of people were mad at the comment that CBS made the series to keep their rights. Fine. Have a different opinion. I don't care. A lot of uh, places make things to keep the rights. Like the Fantastic Four keeps getting rebooted every so often so they don't lose the rights. No one needs more Fantastic Four. But when Star Trek Discovery is done with its season... I will get the CBS free week pass, and I will watch it. I will binge it. I will give it the chance. I know I have my little encyclopedia of knowledge that is going to be hard to digest, because Klingons, 
have never cared about their dead, and now these ones do. So maybe they are a hybrid religious cult. I would love that to be explained. It just wasn't, so it's hard to process. It's also hard to process why Sarek is her adopted father, and he has nice dark brown hair here, but in the Kelvin timeline TOS, he has gray hair, but in the original timeline TOS, he has salt and pepper hair. Why is his age fluctuating? Why wouldn't Spock have talked about her? <laughs> there were so many Vulcans they could have picked <laughs> that they didn't have to go with Sarek. T'Pol could have raised her. T'Pau could have raised her. Why Sarek? Anywho, I will watch it when it's all complete, and I will try my best to like it. I tried my best to like it last night. I loved some of the alien races. I hated some. I wish they would have done more character development and less nip, 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 nip. But, but, it might change. So I will give it the best chance I can give it. And I'm sorry to those who were, had their sensibilities offended. <laughs> but thanks to all of you who did watch, I am still going up in numbers. We are at 1,394 views, which is terrifying. 95 comments, 56 likes, and 29 dislikes. So this outdid Grim by a long shot. <laughs> so I'm sorry if you didn't like my review. Not much I can do about it, honestly. So yeah, I hope I doubt I answered any questions, and I doubt many of the people who left these comments will watch this video, but I wanted to talk about it real quick, just to say that no, my husband isn't the submissive one in the group, he just doesn't like cameras, <laughs> and that no, we're not overly sentimental to some extent, that we wanted to like it, because you have to let go of some things to move on, but they want you to let go of all things to move on. And I can't do that. So, that's what it is. I'm sorry. And I know I said I wasn't going to make a video today, but I just, there were so many comments. I didn't want to like sit and type to each one, so <laughs> here I am. Okay. I will go and see you all the next time. Bye.